Is SpaceX going to pull off another incredible achievement soon? SpaceX recently revealed an enormous amount of information about the third launch. We own the flight profile, the date, and much more. This is so thrilling! However, if this is your first time watching our channel, please subscribe and click the bell icon before watching the video so you don't miss any future updates. Let's dive into the video and let you all know what you need to know about IFD3. A week and a half is not a long time. Things may get a little wild at Fog Base, but this time our projections were spot on. Once Ship 28 was stacked by Mechacilla's somewhat modified arms, there would be a wet dress rehearsal. This test is critical to the launch campaign since it asks the business to load the Starship with methane and liquid oxygen. With a countdown and a discussion of the dangers involved in powering this enormous machine, the entire team handles the procedure as though it were the actual launch day. The main difference between a WDR and a real launch is that the countdown in a WDR stops at T10 seconds rather than starting at T0. Due to several obstacles in the way of the initial test attempts, the booster was temporarily returned to Mega Bay. But as soon as Starship was back in flying configuration, a successful rehearsal appeared to be around the corner. We noticed a specific road closure on March 3rd. At just 10 hours, it was shorter than the customary 12 hours set aside for a WDR. We had originally planned to use this closure for a spin prime test of Ship 29, but we had other plans for something far bigger. Wenting was seen at the launch complex's orbital side after the road restriction went into force, suggesting that stage zero was cooling down before taking action. Later in the evening, cryogenic propellant started to enter the tanks of the ship and booster as had been predicted. Amazingly, they managed to not only pack the entire rocket this time, but they also did it in record time. Propane loading a Starship typically takes around 90 minutes, which is fairly quick, especially when you consider that the space launch system needs several hours to fuel. On the other hand, the SLS can move slowly because of an insulating layer that reduces the propellant's heat absorption. There's no reason to rush if you only launch one rocket every few years, right? The naked stainless steel structure of Starship, on the other hand, is not insulated, so fueling is a race against time as the propellant is heated and rapidly converted into gas. Due to the increased internal pressure caused by this change, some fuel must be lost to release the gaseous propellant. SpaceX has been making constant improvements to the orbiting tank farm to remedy this. More subcoolers and pumps have been added in the last few months. These were anticipated to cut the propellant load requirement time in half. During this overnight wet dress rehearsal, which has also the first time the improved system was used, this work was completed. The outcomes were amazing. What do you suppose? For what duration did they take? It took SpaceX less than 45 minutes to load Starship to capacity. This is a ridiculous improvement. An average Falcon 9 launch takes about 1 hour and 20 minutes and requires a lot less fuel. After the practice, SpaceX declared on X that the Endeavour had been a total success. They also posted some amazing pictures of the prototype, even with the poor lighting. This appears sci-fi. Securing the required launch license requires completing the wet dress rehearsal. It is required. SpaceX has created a page for the third flight's live feed on X, which reflects their optimism. Historically, these kinds of feeds have indicated an official launch announcement and this time was no exception. You've had enough waiting time now. Are you ready for the juicy details? SpaceX revealed a shocking revelation. The third flight test of Starship has been officially confirmed for March 14th. Become enthused. It's leaving the station, the train. The business states that 30 minutes before liftoff, the official stream webcast will start. This implies that the launch window will open on the 14th at 1300 GMT, 7 AM Central Time. SpaceX updated its website with the launch date confirmed, providing us with some much needed information about the mission's flight profile. In light of the IFT2 profile, let us compare it. Unsurprisingly, even before the third Starship departs the tower, there will be significant changes thanks to the new WDR protocol. Booster fueling will now start at 42 minutes before liftoff instead of the previous 1 hour and 37 minutes due to new hardware that was installed at the tank farm. The ship propellant load will now begin first to ensure that the ship and booster are prepared for launch simultaneously. The remaining sequence of events up to liftoff is largely unchanged. The initial few actions of the real flight will resemble those from the second mission as predicted. Except for super heavy reaching transonic speeds later than on flight number 2, the booster phase of this launch will essentially be the same as that of flight 2. Similar to the last mission, the ship fires all six Raptors after a 1-2 separation. 
They remain lit until the T plus is 8 minutes and 35 seconds. But this is the point at which things drastically change. The payload bay of Ship 28 will open just under a minute into the flight to ensure that it is functioning even the flight loads. As anticipated, since there aren't any Starlink satellites on board, there won't be any payload deployment. This will be a subsequent step in the process, perhaps on the fourth flight, who knows? Something to anticipate. Following that, Starship 28 will perform a propellant transfer demonstration 24 minutes and 31 seconds following liftoff. And for that, we finally have confirmation. Liquid oxygen will be transferred from the header tank to the main tank during this test. This experiment is a component of NASA's Tipping Point program, which attempts to encourage businesses to test our novel technology. If Ship 28 makes it through all of these stages unscathed, it can coast in space for a whole 16 minutes until it fires up again at T plus 40, 46. So, this concludes it? It's going to go into complete orbit, right? Okay, so, no. Rather, this will be an in-orbit Raptor relight demonstration, possibly emulating the December single-engine firing. Still magnificent. Starship will start its atmospheric recentry in just 9 minutes, indicating that a genuine orbit won't be seen for some time. This is perhaps the rationale behind SpaceX's desire to test the Raptor again. They'll feel more assured that they can carry out a de-orbit burn safely on a subsequent flight if all goes according to plan. Ultimately, Ship 28 will make an eventful landing assuming the heat shield functions as planned and it doesn't explode while leaving space. That's not quite a clear definition of what SpaceX implies. It will very likely still crash into the water, although a powered, targeted landing was included in the FCC license for that specific launch. The most intriguing shift is where the upper stage of Starship settles regardless of how it does so. The splashdown zone for flights 1 and 2 was in the Pacific Ocean, directly near the island of Kuawi. SpaceX hopes to land in the Indian Ocean this time, which should let them conduct the in-space engine relight and reach a greater apogee. You can see that the third flight will be very different from the other ones. Let's not get carried away just yet, there is still the regulatory aspect to consider. Has the launch license been granted to SpaceX yet? No, but the updated launch license is fairly close and it shouldn't be a barrier for launch number 3 according to reliable sources like Eric Berger and Christian Devonport. You may now become enthusiastic. Lastly, further indications are also showing us how close the launch is. A new notice to mariners covering a significant portion of the Gulf of Mexico where Super Heavy will make landfall is part of this. Ultimately, after the landing burn, booster tents tank valves will open, letting water into the tanks and preventing recovery. SpaceX will attempt to roll super heavy and use a tow line to force water into the tanks or pierce them with a gun if, for some reason, it doesn't sink on its own. Not to be laughed at. One of the official options is to shoot the booster. Poor creature. Notice to air missions or NODAMs for both the US and Mexico sides of the border ought to appear soon. I hope I don't have to mention that we will, of course, stream the entire event using Starbase's brand new camera network. Three cameras are gonna be up. One is located directly at the edge, one is halfway within the exclusion zone, and one is essentially as close to the OLM as is permitted by law. Look, the launch of SpaceX's Shape 28 is imminent, as evidenced by the ship's wet dress rehearsal and the inspection of its heat shield. The ship was taken down by Mechazilla chopsticks, possibly as part of final polishing before liftoff. SpaceX is serious about testing the heat shield during recentry and all broken tiles will need to be replaced. SpaceX has already suction tested more tiles to ensure they won't fall off. Furthermore, Ship 28's flight termination system costs are currently absent. Although it is hoped that these will not be employed, the significance of the system was made abundantly clear by the first two launches. SpaceX is forced to destack the ship from the booster to install these charges since they need close access to the upper components of the ship. By the way, are those two black rectangles visible to you? With the upgraded antenna, there should be a more reliable connection for the upcoming expedition. Although there were some stunning views from the most recent launch, neither the flight nor the review film featured any footage from Starship itself. Perhaps not in the instance of Flight 3. What are your opinions? Do you think the video coverage of third launch will significantly improve? More significantly, do you think Starship will be able to make its recent career successfully? Share your thoughts in the comments, also don't forget to give our video a thumbs up if you liked it.